I love Highbury Fields. This is genuinely one of my favourite places in London. I know I often say that and I mean it, but I've had a strong attachment to this place for getting on for about 20 years now. I lived in the area that long ago and I loved it here. Uh, it's a real place of, I found it's almost like a real refuge in the city. And indeed, during the Great Fire of London, this was one of the places that the citizens of the city of London took refuge. It is up on a hill on high ground, and apparently people gathered here and looked back to watch the city burning down. So this is where the, the great painter Walter Sicker had a, an art school. Did lots of paintings of North London, Walter Sicker. One of the great London painters. I love that cafe. Yeah, I think these are the old Victorian gas lights. I mean, this is the popular image of Islington, isn't it? These grand houses here on Highbury Hill, but they're in no way indicative of the borough as a whole. We are now, of course, moving into Jeremy Corbyn territory. This is Jeremy Corbyn's Islington North constituency, of which I was once a member. Good bloke, Jeremy Corbyn. My, uh, my dear friend, Bob Roberta Smith, the artist, suggested that I do a uh, lead Jeremy Corbyn trail walk. <laughs> what do you think of the Ho Chi Minh Trail? <laughs> uh, it's, it's an interesting idea, so if you think that's a good idea and if you want to go on it, leave a comment below and I'll put together a Jeremy Corbyn Trail. <laughs> It'd be funny, wouldn't it? God, the uh, Emirates Stadium, home of Arsenal Football Club, kind of dominates the, uh, the backgrounds of these houses here, doesn't it? There it is, the Emirates Stadium, the Theatre of Disappointment. Sorry, my Arsenal supporting. Friends and viewers, don't mean that. They're a proud and noble football club, Arsenal. I used to know quite a bit about the local history of this area. I've forgotten it. <laughs> I'm walking up a street called Albert Park and it reminds me actually this was a classic case of a series of kind of quite grand manors that were on the high ground uh, just above the city. And so you kind of had the rich city gentry living up here. But it's also a land of wells and springs as well, and a land of pleasure gardens. Islington was famous for its pleasure gardens and its wells and its springs. And to get the uh, standard mention of my book in, there's quite a lot about that in my book, This Other London. <laughs> uh, I've got that out of the way now. But um, yeah, it really is a wonderful area, and it's got a fascinating history. This is a really great example of beautifully well-built social housing. You know, these flats were built to a higher standard than the contemporary so-called luxury apartments that you see str uh, springing up around London. This is the old Highbury Stadium, which is obviously being converted into flats. Right, here it is, Highbury Stadium Square. Wow, this is really weird. So I'm now walking behind what was the goal. 
this was the pitch. This was the famous Highbury pitch. Looking down towards Arsenal's famous North Bank. It's a bench in memory of many loyal Arsenal supporters in this stadium. 1913 to 2006. So this is the, the old pitch. This is a very strange experience, I must say. It's difficult to imagine all the, the great footballers that have played here, right here. That was once one of the stands. That's the, uh, the listed part, I think. Yeah, look, here's a detail from the old stadium here. This must be from the listed part. There's the Gunners logo there, behind the scaffolding. And that was the famous entrance into, it's a very ornate marbled kind of hallway there. It looks more like a kind of art deco hotel than a football stadium. Oh, let's go inside. Oh wow, look at this. This is incredible. The marble halls of Arsenal FC. That's uh, Herbert Chapman. I think was one of the great Arsenal managers of the past. Now this is one of the entrances to the famous North Bank that fans would have gone into. Now it's the entrance to Stadium Muse. Arsenal Tube Station originally called Gillespie Road. They think they could probably change it back now, couldn't they, to its original name. Now it's not the tube station for the Arsenal Stadium. I've got to say that is one of the finest roundels I've seen anywhere in London. Look at that, isn't it beautiful? All tiled. Here's an overview of the area. The old Arsenal Stadium. Here we are now. It's the Emirates Stadium, so it's really close. And we're gonna go north. Through Gillespie uh, Park Nature Reserve. This is an old railway sidings which is now turned into a, an ecology park, nature reserve. have a healthy lunch today. Chicken, chicken strip burger with uh, fries and underneath that is three hot wings. £2.49, come on. It's the place at Finsbury Park which I think was reviewed by the chicken connoisseur. <laughs> the wonderful chicken connoisseur. So that's why I went in there. Eden's Cottage. Massive queue right back to the door. All off the back of Revolver by the chicken connoisseur. Incredible views from up here. Unfortunately, they won't come out very well on the camera. I think the high ground you can see in the distance of this photograph, get my finger in there, well, there. That must be, I think, looking back across towards the Lee Valley. So now we we pass from Finsbury Park into Hornsey. And Hornsey and Crouch End is a land of great sort of myth and legend. As I write my book, This Other London. That's two mentions in the same video. But I, I give it, uh, you know, I give it more attention than I probably will here. But it's, there's all sorts of interesting mythology linked to it there. 
is the uh, my favourite association is with Shaun of the Dead, which is which was filmed just up here. Um, there is a Will Self book called the North London a Will Self story, I should say, called the North London Book of the Dead, which is Crouch End really. Uh, the Highgate Vampire, a fascinating legend, a real legend from the 1970s. One version of that story says that he was finally slain in a large house on Hornsey Lane up here. What else? Stephen King wrote a story inspired by the Parkland Walk. There's many other things as well. They're said to be the conjunction of two ley lines beneath the clock tower of Crouch End Broadway. I love it up here. <laughs> I've been in places. Look at the houses, look. The houses kind of look mystical as well. Look at that kind of almost kind of ecclesiastical architecture of that porch. I mean, this is where a vampire would live, isn't it? And this is a fantastic view from uh, Ridge Road here, which. Uh, it runs along a sort of spur of the Northern Heights and you can see right across the valley to uh, Alexandra Palace on the opposite hill. What I love about this street sign is the fact it contains punctuation in a street sign. <laughs> it's great isn't it? That must be the most famous Londis in the country. I'm going to give you a couple of seconds to guess where it may be from. Yep, it's the corner shop featured in Shaun of the Dead, where Shaun goes to buy his Cornettos from and his Diet Coke. And I recreated that scene when I came up here for my book, This Other London. And uh, I'll drop that footage in now, actually, because I don't think I can do it as well again. But I did go in there and buy a Diet Coke and a Cornetto and I wasn't the first person to do that. And the house that's featured in the film where Sean lives is in this road, Nelson Road. And if you remember in the, uh, in the film, the guy who works in the shop is called Nelson, which they've obviously taken from this road. It's a really good place to end this video. I'm never going to top that, the Shaun of the Dead scene. Probably never going to top it ever, actually. Until we go for a mooch and flashback records up here on Crouch and Broadway. See you on the next walk. <laughs>